Today's guest, Meredith Huck, two-timing Meredith Huck, is going to tell us if she had to get rid of all of her business practices and could only keep one thing. What would that be? What do you think that is? Stay tuned and find out. Hey, kids, and welcome to Designed by Wingnut Social. I'm your host, Darla Jethro Powell. I'm the grand high poobah of all things here at Wingnut, a digital marketing agency for all of you in the home space, interior designers to the trade vendors, architects. That's all we do. And that's all we specialize in social media management, particularly Instagram is our bread and butter because, man, it's hard to beat Instagram for getting clients for your interior design firm and search engine optimization. All of that jazz. To find out more information, go to wingnutsocial.com and see how we can work together. We'd be happy to have a chat and see what that could look like. All right, guys. Today's guest is no stranger, stranger danger to the show, Meredith Huck. She's a two-timer. She's two-timing us today. And it's been a year since we talked to Meredith. And when we first talked to her, she hadn't even been in business for a year. And it was already just getting success and clients from her Instagram. And I just had to see if it was a fluke. (laughs) Meredith, I had to invite you back and see if you were still as successful or even more so a year later. And guess what? Wouldn't you know it? Of course she is, right? She's showing up on social. She and I had a discussion in the green room. And that's not what this episode is about, but she's still getting a majority of her clients from Instagram. We may mention that in the show. But today we're talking just about the systems and processes and what she's learned in her business that have helped her grow her account. And there was a a really important moment there where she said, you know, um, if I can only choose one of these SOPs, systems and processes, procedures are one most important thing. This is the one I would keep. So stay tuned. All right, guys, you know the drill. Before I get into my conversation with Meredith Huck, I got to tell you a little bit about her, and it is a little bit. (laughs) Meredith and her husband live in coastal Connecticut with their two young children. Meredith is also a licensed real estate agent in the state of Connecticut and enjoys supporting her clients to turn average houses into spectacular homes. Cannot argue with that. Wingnuts, help me in welcoming Meredith Huck to the show. Hey there, Meredith Huck. Welcome back to the show. How the hell are you? Darla, I am stinking awesome. How are you? <laughs> I'm well. You know, they make they make products for that. <laughs> <laughs> I am a fantastic, then I'll say. How are you? I, I'm doing really well. It's so nice to have you back on the show. We talked to you about a year ago or so, I want to say, right? Uh, episode number yeah. 278, where um, you're still a relatively new interior design firm, but you'd only been in business, what, how long when I interviewed you in that show? Six months, it was like maybe, a year? was it? Yeah, yeah, not even, I don't not even, even think a year, it was right? A year. Yeah, maybe like when we went live, it was a year, but recording, yeah, no, not even, hadn't even had my birthday yet. Yeah, and, and you, you're already super successful. So let's see, it's not even two years then, if my math is right. And a two time guest, or you're two timing us. This is your second time on the show to share today's topic, which is systems and processes with interior designers. And I know we've covered this before, folks, I know, but I love to hear different paradigms, points of view from different designers who do things differently, because it might just be Meredith Huck today who gets it through your skull (laughs) to do something in a certain way. And that light bulb might just go off. So are you game? Are you game to talk to us about how you've grown? All right, cool. This is what keeps me or puts me to bed, wakes me up in the morning, I should say. I love it. <laughs> this, yeah, All right. We, I think we understand what it is that you're putting down. Okay. So systems and processes. So you've been in business under two years. And uh, when we spoke before, you were pretty rocking and rolling, but I'm sure that you're learning as you go. So talk to us about your systems and processes and, and where you're at in the development of them and how you're coming up with these systems and processes? Is it the school of hard knocks or are you uh, picking someone's brain? Let's go. I'm stealing other people's ideas. That's what I'm doing. (laughs) And I suggest everyone do the same. Um, But okay, before I tell you that, I think it is important to share that I don't come from, not only do I not come from a design background, Mm -hmm. so I didn't work for a firm. I didn't go to school. I don't have my credits. I don't even know. Can you have certificates for this? Yeah, not me. Yeah, Mm -hmm. I wasn't a police officer, but... (laughs) I was selling software sales, HR software sales. So like literally not even creative, but I think that is why I was able to be successful so quickly were these systems and processes, were these standard operating procedures, SOPs, the organization, the detail. 
Um, I hired somebody that you had on your podcast. If you've listened to any podcast I've been on, <laughs> you must think I'm making a commission off of her, which I'm not, but I I love her. Katie McFarland, Dakota oh, Design Company. Dakota, yeah. So good. So fantastic. And I will tell you, I hired her before I had a client. Was that yeah. scary? Yes. Well, thank you for asking. It was because it was an investment. I had made zero dollars. I had spent more money than I had made because, you know, you got to get the business up and running yeah. and all that. Um, by the time, you know, she usually has a wait list. So by the time we had got started, I had a couple clients, but I started with a process before I needed one. And I think that is the key. I think so many designers, even friends of mine that I chat with, they're they're like always playing catch up. Like, oh my goodness, I just got yeah. a renovation. I've never had that before. Now I need documents for that. Oh my gosh, I got my first new build. Now I need documents for that. Um, so cross my fingers while I'm hoping to sign the contract soon for a new build. I've actually never done a new build, but I have all my documentation for a new build. I have my spec books put together. I have my construction binders put together. So I just think it's really important for, for people to get SOPs set up, again, mm -hmm. those standard operating procedures before it's necessary because play, you know, playing catch up, no thanks. I'm busy enough. I love that you said that, Meredith, because I did not do that. When I started my interior design firm, I just went in from the creative side. Yes, I, I was a cop, by the way. I think I believe you're referring to me. I, I you're the only one I know, years. so yes. <laughs> um, so I just went in to it from the creative side, not even really knowing I need systems and procedures, made a lot of expensive mistakes and was playing catch up, doing it as I go. And I'm so glad that you you mentioned Katie McFarlane, who was on the show and her episode will be in the show notes at wingnutsocial.com of Dakota. And um, she's referred clients my way and I've referred clients her way. So she's she's terrific. We really love her. And we have clients now working at Wingnut who, who still are using her as a uh, interior design business coach who sing her praises and she's made all the difference in there. Oh yeah. Their Julianne actually design Hendrickson, business. who's uh -huh. I think yeah. a, a mm -hmm. client of yours who she's sings won, your yes. praises and her <laughs> social has grown tremendously. We, we love are always Julianne's and business. She's, yeah. Yeah. Has grown. She's like yeah. some of the best money I've ever spent between um, mm. Wignut and, uh, and Katie. So a little, little w, double whammy for you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I, I, I love all of them. Julianne's terrific. She's been with, I think she's been with us the longest. I think she's been with us the longest and she's, she's taken her firm from like half a million to God knows where she is right now, four or 5 million. I can only imagine at the projected rate she was going. I know, right? Good for her. She must have standard operating procedures. You would think. <laughs> and she's good people. That's I yeah. think that's super important to be successful, right? To have good people. Okay, so you got your systems and did you get all of your systems and processes from Katie then? Is this it? Goodbye. Have a have a good day. Tune in next week. Or did you learn and get some also the hard way? Because I imagine some of the systems and processes have to be individually dependent on how you want to work too, right? I mean, yes and no. Don't okay. stop listening now. Um, but mm -hmm. she really did put together this shell for me um, mm -hmm. that I made sure I followed. And I think if you work with anyone, if you listen to all the podcasts, there's so many wonderful ones out there, of course, yours included. If you talk to other designers, a repetitive piece of advice that I got was write down your process. Oh, I don't have a process. Yes, you do. It might be awful. Uh, <laughs> it might be archaic, but you yeah. got a process. So you get a lead. Well, how does that lead come to you? Okay. Mm -hmm. You receive it. How do you respond to that lead? Like there are, if you really, really break it down, I think you'll be able to see kind of where some of those holes are. I love automation. I think that's very important. I went to um, design camp last fall, which is, um, a workshop run by um, Anastasia Casey and Lindsay uh, Borchard mm -hmm. from Lindsay Brook Design. And they, you know, also talk about um, automation. And if you are sending an email more than once, it needs to be templatized, period, end of discussion. Yeah. Um, so I have a whole slew of saved templates in my email. And when I get a lead, a template goes out. And when I get a response, a template goes out. And when I get a a contract signed, a template goes out. There's no reason why you need to reinvent the wheel. How silly. Yeah. Um, same. And same thing goes for my documentation. We have a welcome guide, an investment guide, FAQ, that contract. Everything is editable. It needs to be, of course. Mm -hmm. um, 
but there's a, there's a there's a spot for it within our systems. Um, and I just think that's so important because, like I said earlier, I mean, everyone's busy in their own way. My husband travels for a living. I have a five and a four year old. I'm running well, my own business. Yeah, you're busy. I don't have time to write that email for the 97th time. Right. So I, th I think this is incredibly good advice for someone who is considering starting their interior design firm or they're in the beginning stages and they don't have systems and processes is to reach out to someone like Katie or a, a business coach who has proven systems and processes and make that investment. But if they don't have that wherewithal and they want to DIY it, I like the idea of just, okay, what are you doing now? Write that down, seeing it in black and white and, and kind of reverse engineering that client journey to see what that could look like and fill in any holes and see how you can standardize that and make that a repeatable process for the different service offerings. I think being repeatable is so important. So here's a mm -hmm. big piece of advice I have also. Okay. So in my opinion, there's an exception to every rule. So whatever I'm going to say is like 90% of the time, but there's the 10% that for whatever reason, because of you, because of me, because of circumstance, whatever, mm -hmm. we don't follow that specific rule or process or guideline. My week is set up the same every single week. Mondays wow. and Fridays are open for who knows what. Maybe a nap, Darla. Probably <laughs> not, but you never know. Um, it could oh, be nice. it could be that off discovery call. It could be that off site mm -hmm. visit. It could be putting a presentation together. But Mondays and Fridays I keep open. Okay. Tuesdays and Thursdays, I'm on site. If I have a project and I'm responsible to be on site for that project, I can come to you on Tuesday. I can come to you on Thursday. Period. Again. There is the 10% that you might catch me on Instagram and it's a Friday and I'm on site and there's a reason behind it. But okay. for the most part, I offer Tuesdays and Thursdays. Wednesdays is, are my administrative days. I do all of my discovery calls on Wednesdays. I do all my status check-ins on Wednesdays. I put together my status reports on Wednesdays, which by the way, are templatized. How do you templatize status reports for individual products? You mean they're just the categories and you fill in the blanks? Yep. Yeah. And then I okay. go uh, from the week. So I send them biweekly. They go out on Friday. So okay. they do get a tweak Friday morning, but I put them all together every other Wednesday and they're all going out every other Friday. I don't have, I don't have five go out this Friday, 12 that go out the following Friday. They all go out the same time. And it does take some time to put them together. But to your point on how do you templatize that, I have my, um, you know, my, my cover for each project, all my projects are named by address. I started to do last name and then like everyone was just confused by that. So <laughs> I named my projects by address. Um, and then my, so my cover page and my second page has what's just been completed, what is upcoming, and then what is, you know, future state. For example, if we're building furnishings would be down the road. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I hear so many of my girlfriends and I'm friends with so many wonderful designers locally, nationally that are in X town Monday, that same town Tuesday, back on Thursday, returning something on Friday. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's that was really me. stupid. Yeah, I was dumb. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you're just wasting so much time in the car, so much back and forth. Yeah. And again, 10% of the time, yes, sometimes I go to... Greenwich, Connecticut twice a week. Rarely, rarely. Would you call this like macro time blocking? Are you just, is it time blocking in per se? Do you time block those days or are you just like no. willy nilly on that day as long as that gets done? Yeah, I, uh, maybe willy nilly on the day because I do think there mm -hmm. needs to be some flexibility. Well, which you is, have the kids too. Yeah, so, well, yeah. lucky. <laughs> it's funny you say that. We've, uh, we've been without childcare this summer and today's day two that we have full-time camp, which is why I'm talking to you now. Oh, nice. Um, but yeah, you, you certainly need to be flexible and whatnot. And I personally don't time block. I don't say like this hour I'm doing this and this hour I'm doing that. But if I'm not on client sites, if I'm not connecting with vendors, for example, on a Wednesday, there's only so much I can do. And another little spoiler alert, I don't give my clients my phone number. Uh, yeah, I, I don't I didn't either. I mean, they had the business one, but not my personal. Some people like to do that, though, because it just trust and you can call me and text me at any time. You and can't. I think, Sorry. 
Yeah, I think that you're they're going to regret that as as years go and they they grow their business. But I want to get back to the time blocking just a minute before we move on. Sure. And that I have tried the little micro manage time block, like this hour to this hour I'm doing this, this hour I'm this hour, and I I kind of felt more of a failure trying to do that and failing. But I do something similar to you, but not as maybe um, strict. Psycho? But I say so not a psycho, no. <laughs> but where I do the day blocks, like Mondays, I'm doing pod prep. Tuesdays, which is today, we're recording, are the days I do the interviews, and then I leave open my calendar open for sales, which can be random, or admin, or, or so. I kind of half of where you're at, but I could tighten up my days a little bit more. I'd like that idea, and keeping that less stressful and more flexible within the time span of the day. Yeah. yeah. And as long as you like mentally know, okay, there is some mm -hmm. flexibility, like it doesn't have to yeah. be so rigid. For example, you just blew my cover. Today's Tuesday. I typically would do uh, this on a Wednesday. You <laughs> uh, don't have calendar. You 10%. don't do it on a Wednesday. So yeah. here I am. Look at me being mm -hmm. flexible. <laughs> <laughs> this um, is the 10%. The 10 yeah. And you were it's okay. Talking about. It's no problem. Um, mm -hmm. I actually had a discovery call this morning. Uh, the oh. gentleman owns a catering company and has to be in his office every Wednesday. So instead of saying, sorry, we're not a good fit. No problem. <laughs> yeah. Let's do Tuesday. Yeah. I think some common sense is at play there yeah. too. Yeah, for sure. Right. Because you don't want to, you don't want to cut your nose to spite your face. Is that how, that's how that's said? I've literally never heard that, but I love it. <laughs> You've never heard that? No. Maybe I didn't what say it What is it? it right. Cut your nose to save your face? To spite your face or something? Uh -oh. I don't know. I'm old. I'll Google it later. <laughs> So in the green room, you were telling me that you have, and I don't know what the answer is to this. Like if you could only, like in our What Up Wingnut round, if you could have only one food on the island, you mentioned what is the, the single most important SOP that you have, like in your gauntlet, which I don't know what it is. What is the single most important SOP that you have in your arsenal? And it might understand that like if you, if someone were to say, you have to get rid of all your SOPs, but this one, this would be the one you'd keep, right? Okay. So I would consider it a, something operational. Is it a procedure? I don't What's know. An SOP stands for standard operating procedure. Yes, I know. <laughs> but I kind of already said it. Maybe it's a, a rule is okay. Okay. The communication. I don't give my uh, clients my phone number. It is not because I'm mean. I promise I'm not. <laughs> it's not because I don't like my clients. I literally only work with clients that I absolutely love. I have said mm -hmm. no to actually Good the two you. potentially largest um, clients I could have ever had. I did not work with them because I was like, you are a miserable human. I will therefore be a miserable human and it will impact everything. Wow. How did you tell them no? How did you tell them no? I just had a, an episode with Nikki Roush and we were we were talking about this, the episode pr right before you. And we were, how do you, if you have somebody that's willing to plunk down the, ch the coin, but you don't want to work with them, how do you tell them no? I was just very honest. I said, I just don't think you're going to be happy with our services. They, um, the gentlemen, they were, they were nice, um, but they had a lot of demands and could only meet nights and weekends. And that just doesn't work oh, for yeah, me. No. And they were like, well, what if there's a design emergency? Like, how do we contact you? And I shared, we are so organized with our spec book and our construction binder. There are no emergencies, but oh, by the way, if the <laughs> tile is installed upside down again, which it wouldn't be. We have elevations, we have the drawings, we we have everything. That kills me. A design emergency. We can get to like, it tomorrow. Like yeah. it, Well, is there such a thing as a design there actually emergency? Is not. There is not. <laughs> Are Literally. you dying? Do you yeah. have to go to the emergency room? I don't yeah. like the color of the wallpaper. Cool. Let's talk about it tomorrow during our scheduled call. What if there's so, a design emergency? Well, call nine one one. Yeah. <laughs> Call the police. Call the, I'm so, yeah. I interrupted you with this train of thought. Okay, so let's get back to client communications. You don't give them your phone number. Yeah. So how are they getting in touch with you? Is it email? Is it business? Our line communication is email. Mm -hmm. If there's okay. something super duper important that they just have to talk to me about that can't mm -hmm. wait to our next on site or scheduled meeting, no problem. We'll set up a, a Google Meets. I do. Um, I know everyone's mm -hmm. got their own Zoom Teams, Google Meets. We use Google Meets. We do. Um, Communication in regards to the design approvals and selections, I do utilize a software called Design Files. It is so helpful with approvals. I'm like laughing slash PTSD thinking about before I had Design Files when I used <laughs> to get approvals and like, okay, please highlight what you like and then cross out what you don't and then... I can't believe I ever. Got I was just going to ask you if you use any project management software for your communication. I used my Doma, oh, okay. where that had the the communication within that platform, so everything was accounted 
accountable, right? Uh, approvals, product, everything like that. So I was just, uh, since communication is your number one SOP in a broad kind of way. Do do you communicate within that, or it's just a separate email? So for like something like approvals, that all goes through design files. So you'll see this Perfect. lamp and you can mm -hmm. do a green check and you can do a red X. If you do mm -hmm. a red X, I require you to be descriptive as to why you are declining this lamp. Mm -hmm. um, and I will say even, I don't even want you to email that to me. I want you to put that in design files because going back to not giving my phone number, what happened with like, I, I think my first three clients had my phone number and I'd be like, oh my gosh, Darla wanted to change that lamp. Did she send me a DM about that? And like I'd go on Instagram yeah. and you, mind you, you can't search. So if we've chatted a lot, well, screw that. So I'm searching. Okay. Maybe it was, maybe it was text. No, okay. It wasn't text. Did she send in a Pinterest message? Oh, Facebook. It must've been Facebook. And here I am an hour and a half later, can't yeah. find the damn communication. So I just said, you know what? To the point of there's no design emergency, why would clients need my phone number? Okay, maybe they want to reschedule. Cool, send me an email. I totally check my emails quite often. Okay, maybe they have a question about the way the tile is being laid. Well, they won't because we have a spec book, but send me an email. Maybe they want to make an approval. That goes in design files. Mm -hmm. So there really isn't a reason. I will say I've had clients ask for it specifically when we're around install day and they want to let us in the house or something like that. And I actually have given it to them and just said, anything that is sent here that is related to the project will not be recorded. Not because I'm a jerk, but because <laughs> I, it's just, um, it's just not manageable. So if you yeah. want to send me a text and say you're leaving the house at 11, awesome. You can also send me an email. Okay. All right, cool. Well, so speaking of the communication part and how important that is, I know one of the, the hardest things to get get across to clients, and not only initially, but during the project and keeping them real, reasonable and realistic, are setting up expectations of the project. So you said that you're on Wednesdays, you're comprising reports, weekly reports on their product project and how it's going. How else are you setting expectations? And is that repeatable? Oh, yes. Yeah. So okay. I'm um, similar to kind of how I operate just myself and my time. The software that I use, I, I try back in my HR software days, we pitched how we were a single source of truth. We you didn't have to have this app and this app and this app and this app. So yeah. while there isn't one software that does everything, I currently use Google uh, G Suite for Same. my email which is where my templates go. I use that for my forms, which you can customize them a little bit. Um, are they fancy schmancy? No, but I'm trying to run a lean, mean design firm machine, <laughs> and that helps. Um, I use QuickBooks for all my invoicing. I only accept ACH payment, which is just a $10 fee versus mm -hmm. most credit card processing is 3%. Most other ACH transfers are 1%. So I sent an invoice for furnishings for $91,000. Mm -hmm. I'm not great at math, but I think that would be what, 900 and 910, 910 yeah. in fees. Thank what you. What are you doing when they give you pushback on that? Because I got so many clients who gave us pushback on, on um, if we said for certain things, only ACH. I think it was design fees. We did ACH, but product we allowed for credit card. Yeah. Um, I've only had one person complain about it. And really? I- really. Which is so funny. It's the person who had the biggest, most expensive house. <laughs> it's always the way. <laughs> always. Always. And I'm like, huh. Um, they want to put on their Amex and get those points. Go yeah, for it. So, yeah. Here's the 3% fee. Um, I really don't have pushback. I will say, as I mentioned, I haven't done a custom build yet. So mm -hmm. I, haven't ha I haven't sent a $500,000 invoice. Yeah. Maybe as I move up, I will get that pushback. But I think where I sit at, um, say 100000 is an invoice, give or take twenty five. If you can't pay that, you're probably also not an ideal client for me, um, just in the sense that money might be a little like I cater to the luxury market. I want to be yeah. a luxury interior designer. If you don't have that $100,000 to spend... Mm -hmm. then you probably shouldn't be. And maybe we're just not a good fit. So yeah. that was a long-winded way of saying, I've only had it once. And I said, <laughs> sure, I'll pass on the fee to you if you really want to pay 3% on whatever the fee was. And they said, yeah. yes. 
Wow. Yeah, I don't like chasing money. And it's and it's hard. It's getting back to um, finding that perfect client and the client who can comfortably afford you. And you don't have to worry about maybe in the middle of the project, them pulling back on things or something and making sure that that's a good experience for both of you. So talking about, it's getting to red flags, oh. right? Um we like to throw around that term, and by we, I mean me and interior designers. I see a lot of interior designers on a Facebook group are quick to throw up the red flag, right? Um, maybe a little too quick sometimes. So let's talk about when coming to when we're talking about systems and processes. Do you have an intake process that's repeatable that has to trigger do someone that might not be a good fit? Yeah, process. I mean, Come I know on, you do. Love. I'm setting you up. This is yes. called a softball. Um, I do. Thank you for asking, darling. <laughs> you know what? I am I think I'm that designer. I'm that lady that's like, nope, you blinked three times. <laughs> you're out. But you know what, Darla? I can confidently sit here and tell you. And my mm -hmm. husband will give a me test. a pat on the back, who's yeah. sometimes my toughest critic. I am so happy in this business because I don't have clients I don't like. I don't okay. have clients that challenge me. I have okay. all clients that trust me. Um, it, during our last interview, I could mm -hmm. tell you I had some clients that I saw their name in an email and, you know, I got yeah. the shakes. And you know why? That's just because we didn't start off on the right foot. That was 100% my fault. I let them take the process this way. I let them do this. I let them do that. And here we were. What are my red flags? Yeah, what's your threshold? I would say, um, so somebody that just doesn't respect the boundaries. So that gentleman that was asking about mm -hmm. nights and weekends and, and um, design emergencies. I don't work nights. I don't work weekends. If I do, that's on me. That's because mm -hmm. I want to sit down and put a presentation together after the kids go to sleep. It's not because you have told me we have an 8 p.m. Google mm -hmm. Meet or whatever. Right. So for sure, the boundaries. Um, that would be number one. Number two is more subjective, but just like, are you nice? <laughs> like if we're on the call and I just get this like vibe from you that you're just going to be a miserable human. Um, I'd say a big fault of mine is I don't do well compartmentalizing. So if I've had like a bad day at work, I'm like a crazy mom and probably an awful wife. And it's just, it kind of snowballs from there. So I do need to be in an environment that like you're appreciative of me. I'm appreciative of you. We give gifts along the way. We are so much fun to work with. Um, but it's a, it's a mutually beneficial relationship. Like I am not here to serve you. Yeah. Period. End of discussion. It's like partnership. Um, yeah. And then I just say that the the last big red flag for me. Mm -hmm. Um. So so the boundaries, just being kind. The last one is probably I don't want to necessarily say like not having the budget, but you need mm -hmm. to have a budget just like their expectations. So I'll give you an example. <laughs> it breaks my heart. Um, <laughs> three weeks ago, I had a inquiry for um, a 7,400 square foot um, new build. It was to furnish it though. The, the build was completing on nice. the water in Connecticut here where I live. Uh, I think it would have sent all the kids to college and maybe I could have gone back to like a great <laughs> opportunity, beautiful aesthetic. This was in July, 2023. She wanted her furniture in August or September. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she That's was nice. Huge, she was yeah. kind. She had a beautiful aesthetic. I can't do that. Nobody can um, do that. So I think those expectations also um, are really important as well. And yeah. last year that Meredith would have said yes to that and then been miserable and would have had Trying a mad fulfill, client yeah. and probably gotten fired. Yeah, I've done that. I've, I've had clients that are, and it was my fault, you know, being in control of the business and not, not screening that well. So let's get to your intake. What questions are on there that will give you like a hint of, hmm, you know, maybe I'll talk to them, but I'm having a feeling that this could possibly be a, a beige flag or, you know, a pink flag. I stole this idea from someone. I sure. don't remember who, no one I paid, but someone. <laughs> my intake form, if you go to my website, is very basic. I okay. need your name. I need your address. I, I, I think I need your budget. It's like four questions. I don't want that to be a barrier of entry. Mm -hmm. Like I want to get you in my process from there. I send out a templated uh, email gotcha. thanking you okay. for your time. We'd love to work with you. Please fill out this questionnaire, which is mm -hmm. much more um, in depth. Just asking a little bit more about the project. What's your budget? Do you already have a general contractor? Are you open to working with our trades? Please acknowledge that 
you are okay with us buying furnishings for you. I don't make my, I mean, I do make money on design fees. That's not what's paying the bills. Mm-hmm. The bills yeah. is the the margin and markup that we make on furniture. Um, even tile and plumbing fixtures, depending on the project, will also pick up. Same. Um, so questions like that, I think are really important too, because then I want to understand the overall scope of the project. We have a project minimum, so we will happily style your mantle for $13,000. <laughs> You're probably going to say no to that, but that's our project minimum. And are you telling them that in this first email? I don't tell them that in the first email, but prior okay. to the discovery call, they get they get a templated uh, document that goes over our project minimum. So if you're doing full service design, like furnishing, and then if you're doing construction and renovation. Okay. Okay. So at some point before you're actually getting in face to face in a physical 3D world, yes, they know what the yep. price is to work with you. Okay. Every now and again, I'll get a reply. Oh, thank you so much. Mm-hmm. I noticed it's a thirteen thousand dollar minimum. We're looking to do our bathroom, and I don't know if that's going to be a fit. Um, depending on what else they've answered in that questionnaire, I'll either say. Yeah, I'd still love to chat or, oh, thank you so much for your honesty. You're right. I'm not sure it's a fit. We'd love to recommend another local designer if if you need. Please let us know. What are some hard and fast questions that if they give you an answer on that intake that you're just like, nope, not a good fit without, you know, softening it besides the budget? So timeline, uh, that okay. gal that I was telling you about said TBD. Mm-hmm. So I was like, all right, TBD, cool. If mm-hmm. she had put August 1st, I would have probably replied just to say, hey, I don't want to waste your time. That's just not feasible for us. Or anybody. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> it's what I was just hoping. I was hoping to get a call back. Like, all right, I guess it's going to be next April. We'll use you, but <laughs> haven't called yet. If you're listening, please call me back. Um, <laughs> Doubtful. <laughs> budget, yeah. Budget timeline and and just scope. So if if I can see in there, it's a new build. If I can see in there, it's a kitchen bathroom remodel. I think it's the, those smaller. We'd love to update our mud room um, or possibly. Uh, refresh a room, meaning mm-hmm. I'd like to keep my rug and sofa and mm-hmm. right, yeah. side table. We're, sure. we're just not a fit. I, I know plenty of amazing designers that are probably more talented than me because I do think it takes talent that will take a partial room. We won't. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, if you have like grandma's buffet that you want to keep, fine. Mm-hmm. Um, but we're not like just doing the chairs and the light in your dining room. We are. It's yeah. a full service offering. It's- So I think the takeaway here is to tailor it towards what you are an expert at, what you like to do, where where it hits your budget range, right? And and see where they fall on that. And so are you doing, um, I know you're saying you send a minimum budget to work with you to start with, starting, this is what it's like to work with me. Are you giving them a range for different projects and seeing where they fall? Or you're just doing that when you meet face to face on the discovery call? And how are you getting a budget out of them? Do you mean when you're tra- when you're speaking budget, just to clarify, mm-hmm. are you mm-hmm. saying, do I give them, hey, you want a kitchen, so it's probably going to land here, or this is your, for, you want to do your living room, so you yeah, need Yeah, so like say our kitchens typically run seventy five to 200000 or, you know, where do you think you'd fall in that range, or, you know, whatever the case may be, or... We'll usually discuss that on the call, because I do want to get you on the call. I think... Okay. Something that has helped me throughout my career, whether it was that, you know, the HR software sales are here in design is just my ability to connect with those personally and professionally. I think that is a a strength, a superpower, if you will. Mm -hmm. Um, So I do want to get in front of you. And I think that's really important. I've, I've actually heard a lot of designers that do a 15 minute discovery call. That's just a call. Um, I need to see you in person. Well, in person, like you and I are right now. Sure. Um, I think that's really important. Okay. All right. So, because I was just talking to Nikki Roush today, she, she's just top of mind because we were having this call and I was asking her, so I want to get your opinion as well, because it's different for everybody. Mm-hmm. So like if you have, if you have um, someone who might be on the fence of a good fit and you have your minimum project or a project range on a website and you're turning them away saying, oh, well, they're too expensive, I can't work with them, versus getting someone on a, in a softer kind of way and educating them on your value, right? Like you're, you're, you're getting them in your process regardless. So you're getting, you're talking to them, you're educating them on the budget. Are you finding that that is helping convert people who may have 
been turned off by like you saying it's this much to work with us on our website no piss off yeah so <laughs> this is gonna be like an unpopular opinion and i know okay. um i mentioned i had hired, hired katie she does yeah. recommend putting pricing on your website yeah. i don't okay and i think i don't um not because i'm not comfortable i mean i just how many mm -hmm. people listen to this podcast i just told you my minimum like i'm yeah. not afraid to talk money i mm -hmm. think it's really important and so many people are closed um about that so there you go. Mm -hmm. I just, in the same sense that I, I want to get in front of you. Okay, cool. What is $13,000? So you should pick my paint colors and that's it. Like you don't know what that consists of. And it's mm -hmm. different designer to designer. I yeah. know designers that don't do elevations. That's oh. a huge, huge bonus, especially if you're working with a contractor. Yeah. We do full, um, full picture 3D rendering. Sure. So it mm -hmm. looks like your space. That costs me. I outsource that. I wish mm -hmm. I could tell you I was talented enough to do that myself. I'm not. I never will be. Know what you're good at. Um, but I outsource that. And that has changed the trajectory of my business in regards to approvals mm -hmm. and, and revisions. If people see, you know, a little piece of paper, why did I pick up a piece of paper? If people see a sofa, um, I think that would look good in my living room. But then if they see the sofa in their living room with the wallpaper, yeah. with the chandelier, with the the styling, it's such an easier yes. Um, somebody else okay. who you had in your podcast, Stacey Martin, mm -hmm. love her. Yeah. She has such a high approval rate for her design presentations. Yeah, I remember and her telling, saying that. That means she's not going... Can you tell I listen to your podcast? Hi, <laughs> Thank I'm you. creepy. Um, <laughs> no, not I just befriend everyone that's on your podcast. I'm like, hey, I listen to you from Darla's podcast. Um, anyways, she... Um, yeah, she, her approval rating has gone up and so has mine. And I bill flat fee. So mm -hmm. the less hours it takes me to get to that approval... More profit for your girl Meredith over here. Okay, so going back, going back a bit. So I'm just making sure we understand and anyone listening understands. So you are not putting pricing on your website because you are comfortable in your your ability, confidence in speaking to the potential client and educating them on the value before they're they're getting the pricing. Yep, articulating okay. why you should go with House of Pop. Okay, yeah. And I think that that's valid, right? I think everybody's different in the way that they're comfortable with talking to potential clients, clients and pricing and money. And it's not that you're uncomfortable talking about money, you want the opportunity to educate them on what it is like to work with you and why it's worth it. I, I, I do appreciate that. And, and Nikki had a, you know, a different answer on that. But I think it is very dependent on, on the diff, on the different personality totally. as an interior designer. And I, I guess, like, how busy are you? How Mm -hmm. I mean, we raised our, we've, so since you and I last spoke last year, we mm -hmm. have raised our minimum because we were getting busier and good. why not just weed out? Like, mm -hmm. I love what I do, but I'm here to make a dollar. This is my job. <laughs> like, dollar, dollar bill. these days, right? <laughs> um, well, we're in business to make a profit. You yeah. know, that, that's the end of the day. It's not a hobby. Right? No, it is not a hobby. It's fun, yeah. but mm -hmm. it ain't no hobby. Yeah, and, so, and people rely on us to to make it a business. And if you're successful and you're and you are profitable, then you're going to get better service to your clients. There's going to be better end results. So your clients want you to be profitable too, because they don't want to work with with uh, you know what do you call it? What do you call it? What's that? Uh, <laughs> oh, I was just thinking of that song, and I can't remember. <sighs> Ooh, Darla's gonna I, break out into song, guys. I can't. I was going to break out in a song, but I just had a total menopause moment. But I'll just say they don't want to work with someone who's who's not successful, and not profitable, because it shows in every aspect of their their experience with working and, with that interior designer. So I won't digress too much. Scrub, you you Scrubs. Meant, that was the oh, song. Oh, uh, TLC. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I wish I was a singer. I totally would drop it right now, but it ain't going to happen, my friend. Yep. We, they don't want no Scrubs. Super, super quickly. You mentioned experience, and you mentioned mm -hmm. service. Mm -hmm. I think that along with the SOPs and the organization is just another huge differentiator. Having a great client experience, I feel like that's such a buzzword, but I'm sorry, it is so important. Mm -hmm. What are they going to feel like? Are you trying to cater to a luxury market? What are you, what's your welcome gift? What are you bringing to that first call? What is your, do you have, um, what does your signature look like in your email are your contracts branded? Like little things like that, that you think don't, maybe it's not going to get you a new client, but it's going to make, 
Darla keeps being my example. It's going to make Darla feel like, wow, this was such a great experience. And then when Darla goes to her country club and is sitting with the ladies for wine night or whatever, oh <laughs> like Darla's going to talk about how Meredith, oh my gosh, we just had this most wonderful experience. And that is how mm -hmm. some of these referrals yeah. are also going to come. And systems and processes can keep that um, consistent, right? For, for all the clients. Yeah. I said, I always say, I do not, you can ask as many questions as you want, but I don't want you to feel like you have questions. I don't want you to ever feel like you're leaving a meeting going, Ooh, mm -hmm. so what's next? Yeah. And I'll tell you, Darla, you guys do a great job just being a, um, what am I? A guest? Yes. A guest on your <laughs> podcast. Yes. Like, I knew VIP what time danced. we were, what products I needed, how this was going to go. There, I had zero questions. So, Oh, well, thank you for that. I, yes. I owe all that to Nicole, my producer. Nicole Lyons is so good. And we have our systems and processes set up maybe a little too well. <laughs> we're a little annoying. No, it's and We so want to good. make sure nobody has questions and everybody's yeah. set up for success. I yeah. love it. <clears throat> all right. So before we get into the what up wing around Meredith Huck, are you still getting most of your clients from Instagram? Yes, I was. Isn't um, that crazy? Mm-hmm. You know what? It's not crazy. Why is it not crazy? <laughs> I know. Because yeah. it works. Also, it's it's free or it can be an investment mm -hmm. if you hire a company like Wingnut, which is money well spent. But yes. the ROI is just tenfold. And I am just too young, not like age young, but too young. Well, I'm young mm -hmm. also, but you're young. Um, I'm looking <laughs> at you. You're young. I, How old are you? Can I my, ask? How old are you? I just turned <clears throat> 35. Are you serious? Am are you I saying you're older because you're 35? Am I a baby? Just say it. You are a baby. Oh, my thank you, my, doll. Uh, I, my fiance is 34. Uh, so she's really a baby. Shh. Is she really? Look at you, Darla. Yeah, I know. I'm a cougar. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of you has to be, I guess, right? <laughs> All right. So here's what I want to run by you. Now, I have, we've had clients here at Wingnut. And I've had designers tell me who, after a month or two months in of their Instagram marketing, why don't I have five, 10 clients coming in through the DMs? Mm -mm. It's it, exactly right. It's an investment and it's an investment in the long term and building that client relationship, that no like and trust and your Instagram. So I'm, I'm going to I mean, you have 5000 Instagram followers now and I'm, they're all invested, real followers who are d digging what you're putting down. I think when we spoke last, you had two or three or something. Mm -hmm. So right. But the, you're, you didn't just start getting the DMs from nurturing your Instagram account in a month or two months or three months, did you? Oh, no. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. No. If anybody thinks that's going to happen, they're crazy. Yeah, they cray cray. It's so I anything. mean, it could, but uh, generally speaking, no. I, I mean, you would know better than me, but I yeah. certainly am not experiencing it. It's so no like and trust a billion percent. Yeah. Um, People always say, oh, but I don't want to put my face out there. <laughs> you don't, you don't have to, but I can't tell you how many people get on that discovery call with me and they mm -hmm. tell me, I feel like we're best friends. And I'm like, I yeah. don't even know who you are. Like there is this connection and that's the like and trust. Right. And then yeah. they feel like they know me. So boom, boom, boom. I got it all, all yeah. three. I think it's really but important to, you know, for a hot minute, I was like doing the consistent, like one reel a day and like comment and like engage for 30 minutes. And that was like not sparking joy for me. And that was draining me a bit of my happiness. Now yeah. that might work for someone else and they might enjoy that. And that's fine. It wasn't for me. So I kind of tapered back on that, but tried to just uh, put out content that was more valuable. I think um, a couple of things I'll share are put out what you want to get. So yes. I don't, I mentioned the like, sure, I'll sell your mantle for $13,000. If somebody was crazy enough to hire me for that, awesome. I'm not posting about that because I don't want to get another call for a mantle. I don't want to yeah. get a call for a front porch styling session. I don't want to get a paint consultation call. Call, LOL. I don't give my phone number, email, um, <laughs> inquiry. So I think it's really important. Like I really want to work on my first new build. So I've been showing a lot of bigger renovations that we're doing. Perfect. I've been showing yep. specifications books. I've been showing our construction binder. People are like, ooh, what's that? Oh my gosh, that's so cool. I mean, do you, are, when your contractor calls asking for the grout joint, what are you going to tell them? Are you doing a Schluter or a bullnose? You tell me. Like, yeah. I don't know what that is. It's really <laughs> important. So I think putting yeah. out there what you want to receive is important. I do think getting your face out there. But there are plenty of successful designers that don't even have a dang Instagram. If that doesn't spark joy for you, don't do it. 
But if you're trying to figure out why you're not getting leads, mm-hmm. maybe that is why, probably. Oh, there, the, yeah, that's a good part of it. And you're still very front and center on your Instagram page. So pulling back for you is still probably 10 times what the average designer is doing. But um, and of course, we have our Instagram for interior designers course over at Wingnut Social to, to get a grip on having a strategy to put your to market yourself on Instagram. But the, the, the clients that have been with us the longest who are firms like we were talking before, firms that have gone from half a million to million, multi-million dollar interior design firms did not do it in two, three, six, even six months. It took a hot minute. But once you get up to building that rolling momentum and that, that you just there's no... It compounds, you're gonna, right? You're like a like, juggernaut. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I think All right, so. thank you for sharing that with us. I, sure. I do self-servingly appreciate that. I'm a big social person. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, it's it's invaluable. You can't you can't not. Now I have to ask you, are you ready for the what up wing that round? I'm nervous, but I'm ready. You ain't nervous, girl. I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're born for this. What would the hashtag on your tombstone be? I hope it would say she was nice. Oh, yeah, niceness is important, right? Be nice. Be nice. Don't be people. a jerk. You're stuck on a deserted island. You can have your one favorite food forever. What's it going to be? The Allendale roll from Masa in Allendale, New Jersey. It's a sushi roll. So good. That sounds good. Is it like a fried one or is it like the actual no, raw stuff? I, well, because we're on a deserted island, I kind of am have like a little oh. leg up because we're going to just get that tuna mm-hmm. and we're going to put it right on the roll. Um, oh, okay. But it is raw fish and it is... My mouth is watering. I don't know if I can answer your next question now. <laughs> well, we'll try. Here we go. Last but not least, and you've probably recommended a book before, but I, we'll have to look in the show notes, but let's come up with a new one that has impacted you either personally or professionally. Uh, this has impacted both. The Happiness okay. Advantage. Oh, that's nice. Highly recommend it. It's ha- contagious. Like uh, going back to Don't Be a Jerk. Um, I love it. I love it. I love it. It's an easy read too. Happiness Advantage. What did you get from that? Just briefly. Basically that like happiness and kindness is contagious and like there's no reason to bring others down. Um, And the way you think about things, like if you want to have a bad day, you're going to have a bad day. But like Uh, you wake up every day with the ability to push forward in a positive way, no matter what is happening. Yes, sometimes you'll have awful, terrible, tragic scenarios happen and we're not expecting you to you know, push through that necessarily. Yeah. But um, it just kind of talks about like the psychology of being happy. Okay. And I've noticed it. Um, my husband actually had his team um, at work read it and I stole it from from him afterwards. And it's, um, it's really impactful. And I try and lead that way. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna look at it and see if they have it on uh, Audible, because I like do. to listen to my books. Okay, we cool. walk awesome. and listen to it. Nice. Meredith Huck, please tell the Wingnuts where they can go to find out more about you. Follow you on your awesome social media channels and uh, we'll call it a day. Cool. You can slide into my DMs. Um, It's just at House of Huck on Instagram. I don't have TikTok. Don't make me do that, Darla. Um, Pinterest is just slash House of Huck. And then our website is dot House of Huck or I'm sorry, www.houseofhuck.com. Easy peasy. Thank you again for being a two-timer. I'll see you next year, Darla. (laughs) <laughs> hopefully <laughs> <laughs> well I do hope that by now after five years of this podcast that you have it through your head <laughs> that systems and processes are probably pretty important and I love I love 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 having guests from different life experiences, different business experiences, different walks of life, different design styles, different business models, really drill down on their systems and processes and what works for them. Because you'll have a designer who will swear on the Bible, on the Koran, on the Book of Mormon, (laughs) that one flat fee you know, these are the systems and processes. This is how it needs to be done. And then another designer who will swear, no, we have to charge hourly. And I think it really is dependent on how you like to work, your business model, your target market, your ideal clients, the the kinds of jobs you have to do. And there's just an unlimited amount of variables that you can plug in. And everybody's story and success story is different. And everybody listening And how those success stories is going to resonate with them is different. So I do hope that Meredith's story and her telling us, being kind enough to come on the show and give us the information of what's working for her and her firm 
has helped you in some way, or you saw something there, you had a, a little aha moment, you're like, oh my gosh, yes, that's a terrific idea. I want to incorporate that into my systems and processes. And it doesn't have to be all of it, right? It could just be one little piece. And that's how we put together our successful businesses that are tailored to us the way we work, the way we want to work that makes us happy and profitable and successful. You're welcome. All right, guys, that's it for this week. Make sure to tune in next Wednesday, where we have a fabulous guest interview again every Wednesday, every Mondays and Wednesdays. We have fabulous episodes, so be sure to tune in. If you haven't left a review for the podcast, we'd so appreciate it if you could go over to Apple Podcast and, and leave us one of them there, five-star reviews. If it's not a five-star review, then don't leave it. <laughs> Just kidding. Leave an honest review. Hopefully you do get some value from the show and you like what we're putting out there. Don't forget to check us out on our YouTube channel designed by Wingnut Social. It is actually us. It's video. It's produced by my producer, Nicole Lyons, who does a fabulous job. And you can actually see me, my guest, how we are in real life. Sometimes we do finger quotes and you're going to want to see that. So we'll see you next week. And remember, until then, to get out there, get uncomfortable and be great. I had a root canal finish up yesterday, so I'm sorry. It's what? pretty good. It's not bad. I had a root canal that finished up yesterday, but it's not too bad. Or did you mean to commit to this the day after feeling marginally better? Are you? No, I'm okay. I'm okay now. Kind of mostly. <laughs> sort of maybe. <laughs> the, onus is on okay. you. the onus is on you here as a guest. All yeah. I do you want to give me your questions. address in case you like pass out? I can call nine one one and say <laughs> she is under the table at this spot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but for for other reasons than her usual, why she's under the table. Yeah, right. <laughs> who who is the author of that one? Oh my gosh, you didn't tell me. I had to know that. I have no idea. <laughs> With so much for our systems and processes, right? If you refuse me, honey, you lose me, then you'll be all alone. So, baby, telephone and tell me I'm your own. Ribbit. Today's guest, Meredith Huck of House of Huck, is going to tell us if she had to get rid of all of her systems and processes, everything she does in her business, and she can only keep one thing, what it is. What it is. God damn it. That was almost one take. If you're stuck on a deserted island, you could only have one kind of food. What would it be? Well, I reckon that would be beef jerky and whiskey. But you said only one thing. So whiskey it is. And how they want to work and what speaks to them. So I do hope that you got some takeaways there from Meredith Huck. I'm sure you did. Everything's dinging. <laughs> Please stop dinging. <laughs> Please stop with the dinging. Why are you dinging? You know, that reminds me of that. Get out there and get uncomfortable and be great. There was a, a quote. I'm going to paraphrase it. But it says something to the effect of there is never going to be a good time to do the thing that you're afraid of doing. You're never going to get to that point to where you're not afraid of doing it. So just do it scared. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. <laughs>